Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Later this week, we'll finally be able to publish our benchmarks for Intel's new eight core CPUs, like the 9900K. So of course, that's very exciting. But before then, I thought it might be a good idea to check out how CPU pricing has changed over the last few months to see what products are the best value right now and whether we'll continue to see changes throughout the rest of the year. We haven't really had a good reason to make this sort of video yet. We've done it for GPUs in the past with prices that were fluctuating all over the place. But for a long time, CPU prices have stayed fairly consistent. Intel and AMD would launch their new products at a certain MSRP, and then over time, prices would drop slightly until the next generation is ready to go. However, right now, this isn't quite what's happening, at least on Intel's side. You've probably heard about Intel's struggles with 14 nanometer manufacturing capacity in that they're basically maxed out. In fact, just recently, Intel spoke about how they're investing money to increase 14 nanometer capacity. And until that capacity spins up, the company is prioritizing high-end, high-margin products over some of the low-end products. Budget chipsets in particular are rumored to have made way for other chips. So with Intel struggling for capacity, we're in a position where Intel can't supply the amount of processors they need. This unbalances the supply-demand equation, causing prices to go up. Meanwhile, on the AMD front, everything seems to be going smoothly for them as far as most CPUs are concerned. No significant supply issues, and that allows them to be more aggressive with pricing. We'll start with Intel pricing though. In this chart, we have Intel's most popular CPUs ranging from the Core i7 8700K through to the Core i3 8100 and Pentium Gold G5400. We also have pricing data for these products, launch MSRP, July retail price at Newegg, and current pricing as of October 15, all prices of course in US dollars. For current prices, we've taken the lowest price for in-stock products across a range of retailers, including Amazon, Newegg, and several others. Before talking about changes in pricing, three products here are much harder to find than the others. The Core i5-8400 and to a lesser extent, the Core i3-8100 are out of stock at reasonable prices at a fair few retailers. The Pentium Gold G5400 is more available but still appears to be teetering on the border of stock issues. As for pricing, well, as you can see, back in July, everything was looking pretty normal and all products were in stock. Intel's mid-range and budget chips were usually available at the MSRP or slightly below, and it was typical to find a $10 discount on chips like the 8600K and 8400. And the Core i7 8700K was the most heavily discounted, selling for $30 under the MSRP at an attractive $350. But since July, prices have gone up for nearly every product in this lineup, the one exception being being the Core i3-8350K, which I guess isn't a surprise considering that CPU is pretty poor value as is. Some price hikes have been fairly small. The Core i5-8600K and Core i3-8100 have only risen by $10, and in the case of the 8600K, this only brings it back to an MSRP level. But for the best products in the lineup, the price increase is not exactly great news. The Core i7-8700K has risen from $350 to $376 on Amazon, which puts it back up around the launch price. That's not terrible, it's still slightly below the MSRP, but it has completely reversed the downward trend in pricing up to July. One of the larger hits though is to the Core i5-8400, which is well known to be the best value product in Intel's 8th gen desktop lineup. Three months ago, 8400s were in plentiful stock at around $10 lower than its $190 launch price. Today, 8400s are out of stock at many retailers with the cheapest in-stock CPU going for $220. That's a 22% increase on July pricing and 16% on the MSRP. And then there's the G5400, which used to sell for $75 and now can't be found for less than $110, a massive 47% increase that really hurts the value of this budget chip. Over on the AMD front though, it's a completely different story. Not a single Ryzen CPU is selling for above the MSRP at the moment. In fact, the only chip that remains at the MSRP is the Ryzen 3 2200G. Every other SKU has fallen in price. The recently released Athlon 200G is the only real concern here. It's currently out of stock at most retailers, and before it went out of stock, it was selling for about $5 above its $55 MSRP. 
The pricing trend for AMD CPUs is clear. In July, you were able to get a decent discount compared to the MSRP for most products, and today that discount is even larger. The Ryzen 5 2600X, Ryzen 7 2700, and Ryzen 7 2700X are between 9 and 12% cheaper than the MSRPs at the moment, while the Ryzen 5 2600 has seen a huge 20% price drop. Unlike on the Intel side with the Core i5 8400, AMD is very aggressively pricing their best value CPU at the moment, the 2600, with a price tag of just $160. Prices for 8-core Ryzen CPUs are very good as well. The 2700 is currently available for around the same price as Intel's 6-core, six 6-thread six Core i5-8600K. So this is a very different market situation to when these products launched. Even flicking back to the launch of second gen Ryzen, we had slightly cheaper Intel CPUs and full price Ryzen CPUs. Whereas today, the value proposition has swung much more towards AMD's favor. But how much in AMD's favor? Well, let's take a look at some performance and value graphs to see where everything falls right now. Here we have data for Blender running on Intel and AMD's higher end processors. This is data taken directly from our original Ryzen 5 2600 review. You'll see a mix of both stock and overclock results here, although we should note that neither the Intel nor AMD platforms received any specific memory timing or sub-timing tweaks. But of course, if you're interested in full performance breakdowns, you can check out our previous coverage of these processors. Anyway, in Blender, we had the stock 2700X beating the 8700K, though Intel claws back the lead when overclocked, though slightly. Meanwhile, the 2600 and 2600X smoke the Core i5-8400. With these results, it's no surprise to see AMD take a resounding win with today's CPU prices. Their entire lineup of Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 CPUs are better value than Intel's competing options. Even the 2700X is better value than the Core i5-8400, Intel's value champion. And even a 5.2 GHz overclock for the 8600K can't match the stock 2700X for value. That's all down to Ryzen's highly competitive price and Intel's rising prices, particularly for the 8400. In fact, when we go back and look at July pricing, the 8400 is immediately much more competitive in this workload. It's not Ryzen 5 2600 levels of value, but it trades below with other AMD processors, though AMD can handily reclaim the lead when factoring in overclocking. We also see a situation where where the 2700X is much closer to the 8700K in terms of value, compared to current prices where the 8700K is non-competitive. Looking at the budget end of the spectrum, again it's a strong victory for AMD. The Ryzen 3 2200G remains a fantastic value CPU for budget system builders, destroying the Core i3-8100 from a value perspective when stock, and of course you can overclock it to extend the lead further. The G5400 is shocking value at its massively inflated $110 price point, but with the Athlon 200GE mostly out of stock, it'll be interesting to see how that conversation changes if the 200GE returns with a higher price. Handbrake isn't as kind to AMD processors. He Intel's lineup outperforms their AMD counterparts, especially when overclocked. When looking at value, it's an interesting chart even going on today's pricing. Stock or overclocked, the 8700K is still the worst value CPU and gets handily beaten by the much cheaper 2700X in terms of value. The 8600K looks okay when overclocked, but realistically it will be worse value than the Ryzen 7 2700 not seen in these charts, which performs around the same as the 2700X when overclocked, but comes in at the same price as the slower 8600K. And then of course we have the Ryzen Ryzen 5 2600, which is by far the best value CPU of the lot right now, with its crazy $160 price tag. Looking back to July, and things would be different. The 8700K is very competitive with either the 2700X or 2700. The 8600K and 8400 are both decent buys, and the 2600 isn't as much of a clear value winner. Today, of course, it's a very different story. We all know that AMD CPUs are strong for productivity workloads, how about for gaming? Well here we have Battlefield 1 in a CPU limited situation, running at 1080p medium settings with a GTX 1080 Ti, and we're specifically looking at the 1% low results. Intel's entire lineup beats even the fastest Ryzen processor in this test, and there's quite a large margin between the 2700X and 8700K when overclocked. Even with today's prices that heavily favor AMD, Intel remains competitive 
here from a price to performance perspective. The 8700K is only slightly worse value than the 2700X and will lose by a larger margin to the 2700 of course. An overclocked 8600K is a pretty good match value wise compared to the 2700 or the cheaper 2600X, while the 8400 even at its inflated price tag is competitive against the similarly priced 2600X whether stock or overclocked. However, again, the Ryzen 5 2600 is the standout value option, beating every other CPU by a large margin. Three months ago, it was a completely different story. Intel's lineup was much better value for gaming, particularly the Core i5-8400, but even the 8700K was a standout buy up against AMD's eight core offerings. AMD's aggressive price cuts have definitely evened up that race. Of course, it's also important to note here that this gaming value discussion only applies in CPU limited scenarios like 1080p with a flagship GPU. Anyone playing at a higher resolution or with a slower GPU will see the value of Intel's faster gaming CPU shrink and AMD retake a strong lead. Certainly if you're GPU limited, there's no reason to buy an 8700K over the excellent value Ryzen 5 2600 just for gaming. So looking across the lineup of CPUs you can currently buy, it's not a great time to purchase an Intel CPU, especially with AMD's aggressive price drops for their Ryzen lineup. The Ryzen 5 2600 is the best value CPU on the market right now by a fair margin, though those that need something faster should also consider the Ryzen 7 2700 whether you're gaming or running productivity apps. Budget shoppers should be looking at the Ryzen 3 2200G or the Athlon 200GE if you can find one in stock for a reasonable price. I haven't even factored in platform costs here for things such as a motherboard, cooler or memory which often swings things even more into AMD's favor. For example, you can comfortably overclock the Ryzen 5 2600 on a budget B450 motherboard, whereas Core i5 8600K buyers will have to fork out for a more expensive Z370 board to access overclocking. I think this is also a good precursor for what's to come with 9th gen, the Core i5 9600K, Intel's new 6-core, six 6-thread six replacement for the 8600K, is $20 more than the 8600K right now, and the 8600K is already worse value than Ryzen alternatives. Then we have the 8-core 9700K going for $410, which is more than the 8700K, so it would have to offer much higher performance to position itself as a value contender, and then of course the 9900 k at $530. Well, it's hard to see how that competes with the $300 Ryzen 7 2700X, unless again, it's capable of monstrous performance. So yeah, it's not looking good for Intel at all. They really don't have a single win when it comes to value right now, and it'll take something crazy with 9th gen to have that change. It's also bad news for consumers, as AMD really doesn't have any incentive to further lower the cost of Ryzen processors. They are standout value options right now, so why make them cheaper? A more competitive Intel lineup could have, I guess, forced further price cuts or a nice price battle between the two companies, but we're just not going to get that right now. That's it for this one. Don't forget to subscribe to catch our 9900K review when it goes live on Friday. Definitely stay tuned for that one. Also, consider supporting us on Patreon. You'll get access to our Discord chat where you can talk to Steve and I whenever you like, and you'll be able to watch our monthly live streams. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll catch you in the next one.